Well, that first half was rough, but that third quarter was pretty nice, and eventually it got Ole Miss to where they needed to be. Ole Miss a 35-3 to winner over Louisiana Monroe. Let's overreact. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Ole Miss, a 35-3 winner over the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. The first half was about as sloppy of football as Ole Miss has played since Lane Kiffin has been the coach. Louisiana Monroe was never scoring a touchdown in that game. As soon as that game got to 14-3, to it was ball game as far as if you were concerned about the result. We talked about how it was always going to be about style points in the first half. There was no style points, none whatsoever. Third quarter got out. Everybody's going to look at the score, 35-3 to score line. They're going to realize that Ole Miss is coming back in a sleepy game. A lot of teams going through. Ole Miss did kind of what they needed to do. I don't know, relevant moving forward. We'll talk about which games you need to watch. Louisville's up on Miami right now, 31 to 28. There's nine minutes to go in that game. Um, Miami is at midfield. So we'll pay attention to what happens there. Um, but that could be interesting. I think Louisville might still be in line because of the ACC thing, but we'll see exactly how that goes as well. Um, let's look at the stats from this game. It, it was not a pretty first half. It was an okay second half. They, they did well. Jackson Dart was a drop touchdown pass away from 400 yards and four touchdowns. Um, it was a complete lack of focus early in the game. It was one of those situations, honestly, where Georgia was trying to beat Ole Miss twice. We've seen it. We've grown up to where teams that play Alabama, whenever the next week comes on, they're just a little bit – they're not right. That kind of happened. Um, after playing Georgia, Ole Miss kind of woke up in the second half, and that is on. So let's look at the um, the stats right now, and bring this up real quick, and I'll take that. All right. So let me make this a little bit bigger for anybody that is interested in it. Okay. Ole Miss had 26 first down, nearly 500 yards of offense. Like I said, Jackson Dart was a drop pass away from 400 yards and four touchdowns in this game. Louisiana Monroe finished with 258 yards. Yeah, I know it seems like more than that, but they could not throw the ball a lick. They had 66 yards passing. Ole Miss ended up with 371. Running the ball, they had 192. They averaged about three and a half yards a carry. It was just one of those things where they ran the ball, stayed on schedule, bled the clock, and it felt like it was more effective than it was, but it actually wasn't that effective, honestly. Um, penalties, Ole Miss had eight for 81. UL Monroe had seven for 65. UL Monroe had the ball for 34 minutes, Ole Miss 25, because they were trying to bleed the clock. So if you look at the um, individual stats in this game, Jackson Dart was 24-31, 310 yards, three touchdowns. Stuart Stan Spencer Sanders was four or five for 61 yards and a touchdown. Um, touchdown pass was to Caden Lee. Caden Lee looks, looks like a dude. I see a little bit there. He has two catches at Ole Miss, two touchdowns. Good for him. Quinshawn, 18 for 65. Ulysses Bentley, nine for 47. The offensive line, it wasn't a situation that they couldn't block Louisiana Monroe. There was a lot of situations to where it was run, run, pass. The play calling was very vanilla, um, and they found themselves in trouble by not communicating. It just kind of is what it is. Um, this isn't a situation that I think has any bearing on next week's game. Dayton Wade had seven catches for 108 yards and a touchdown. Jordan Watkins, six for 73. Caden Priestcorn, who had a relatively big game, six for 69 and a touchdown. Trey Harris, four for 63 and a touchdown. Caden Lee, one for 51 and a touchdown. Um, Dart fumbled the ball twice, did not lose once. Leading tackler on senior day was Ashanti Seastrunk. Good for him. When Darius Tennyson showed out a little bit as well, Cedric Johnson in the early parts of the game, that's whenever Louisiana Monroe realized that 
they could not afford to get into a passing situation against this Ole Miss defense. They, they just couldn't. Um, so they were going to be in trouble with that. So Ole Miss is kind of where they need to be. Jaden Kennedy played that game. Jamarius Brown made some plays that started to pop up. Um, really good performance for those young men as well. So I'm pretty excited about what that is. So looking at the Egg Bowl, we're up to the Egg Bowl. Um, does anybody know the actual score of the Egg Bowl game? Um, just let me know. I, I, I haven't been able to keep track of that game. I, last I saw, I think State was up 23-7. to seven. I'm sure State closed it out. Southern Miss's offense, by the way. From what I saw, it would make no – nobody would think anything of it if the offense was run by Wes Jones. There's no reason that that offense should be run by a college team, if, if that makes sense. So that is an interesting situation. I think that um, this is a game against Mississippi State that's important. There's a chance to separate. This is a chance to um, do it. It's 34-20 to 20 State. Okay, that makes sense. Turned into a four-quarter game for them like I thought it would be. Um, but that offense for Miss Southern Miss is, is not good. I don't know. Honestly, I'm just going to say this right now. I do not know why anybody is worried about playing Southern Mississippi. I cannot get that. You'll play Louisiana Monroe, but you won't play Southern Mississippi. Same conference, same team. What's up with that? Is it because somebody picked a fight back in 1984, 40 years ago? Doesn't make any sense to me. So you have a situation with Mississippi State coming up to where this is going to be. Um, State just did a pick six, so I guess it's 41 to 20 now. So, okay. Should be a situation to where, A, the Egg Bowl is going to be filled with um, fun hope um, from one side, but Ole Miss should be in a good place um, in that game. I expect Ole Miss to come out. Jackson Dart. I, I love his leadership. I love his leadership. He, for lack of a better word, he kind of fought with um, Lane Kiffin about coming out of the game with Louisiana Monroe. Lane Kiffin was imp imperative about saving Jackson Dart for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Um, he took him out early, all of that. It was 28 to three, and Lane Kiffin just pulled pulled the starters and put them put the backups in. At that point, they knew exactly how this was going to go. Um, they got a touchdown from Spencer Sanders, but at that point it was like, Hey, let's save legs and do the smart thing. If you wanted to beat Louisiana Monroe 55 to three, you needed a better first half. And this, nobody was interested in this first half. The first half of this game is the poster child for the sec needing to go to non-conference games and no non-conference games other than rivalry games should be scheduled after like October 7th, October 14th. It, it, it's ridiculous how this looked. It did. So you have a situation where, you know, get called a penalty, you get dropped passes, you do everything that a team that doesn't play clean football does. And you were still up seven to three. You played a magnitude of five times worse in that first half than you did against Auburn, which was the previous worst that you have played this season. And you were up seven to three. So if Ole Miss would have scored again, which they did, the game was over. Louisiana Monroe was not going to score a touchdown. It just feels like a missed opportunity because Walker Howard did not get into the football game. And I will point about Walker Howard needing to get into the football game and missed opportunities and all that. That's what this was. The score, the style points, you're fine with the New Year's Six. You're fine with all of that stuff. The game ended up about where you needed it to be. I mean, I would have liked one or two more touchdowns, but that's fine. 35-3, to three, you're not going to be penalized at any point by anyone. Walker Howard getting into the game would have been an important thing. And I think Lane Kiffin wanted that. He wanted the third quarter to be Spencer Sanders and the fourth quarter to be Walker Howard. That, that's what Lane wanted in this game. But it just didn't work out for him. Um, you had another team across the field that was playing extreme slowdown because they had to. They had to. If they would have tried to play quick 
with Ole Miss, Ole Miss would have scored 60 points today, even as bad as they played. Louisiana Monroe did whatever they could to keep that game as close as they could. And God bless them, they don't have a quarterback. None. Um, Louisville is tied with Miami right now with five minutes left to go in the game. It's 31 to 31. Um, the big three at wide receiver played well, um, plus the tight end played great as well. Yeah, Jackson Dart had a good game. The, the problem was the lack of continuity and the lack of communication. There was a little bit of a focus issue that happened in the team. And, you know, it, it's it's a interesting situation um, about what's going on. Michigan is only up on Maryland 29 to 24. Speaking of playing with your food, everybody's rooting for Maryland right now. Um, but it is what it is. And I'm not going to spend probably much more than three more seconds talking about Louisiana Monroe. You did what you needed to do. You got through it. Now get ready for the Egg Bowl. Nothing that happened today is going to matter Thursday night. Nothing that happened today is going to matter for a bowl game. You did enough to win, um, to stay in that New Year's Six conversation to where, where Missouri has to play well tonight against the Florida Gators. We'll talk about that in just a second as well. So, an interesting situation, okay? It's an interesting situation, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Looks like um, Miami is a – oh, they scored a touchdown to go up. They're showing highlights that I saw. Um. It's an interesting situation that Ole Miss is facing. Honestly, with the New Year's Six, and I, I talked about this on the pregame show. Let me let me bring this up real quick. I'll get back to the chat in just a second, but let me bring this up. The, 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 this was the bowl scenario going into this game. ESPN's projecting Ole Miss in the Citrus Bowl against Iowa, along with the Action Network, College Football News, and Fox Sports. I think the Athletic has Ole Miss there, too. Um, the Peach Bowl, CBS has Ole Miss in the Peach Bowl against Penn State. CBS wants that because they think Penn State can win the game. I don't think they can. Athlon Sports is saying the same. And then I have the Cotton Bowl and the Requia Quest just because I think they need to be on there at this point. Um, but kind of is what it is. If you look at the playoff rankings as they sit right now, you have Georgia, number one, Ohio State, number two, number three, Michigan. I think somebody said Michigan is playing with their food at the moment. Um, let me bring that up real quick and see how that's going. I had it on a um, multi-view at the moment. So weird, having trouble finding that game. Oh, well, anyway, uh, Michigan seems to be playing with their food at the moment um, with Maryland. So we'll see exactly how that goes um, and how it closes out. But Michigan's not the number three team in the country. They're doing a whole lot of stuff to be relevant right now. They're not the number three team in the country. They're not. They're not better in Ohio State. They're not better in Georgia. They're not better in Alabama. They're not better in Texas. Michigan has has built itself up to be a boogeyman, okay? Michigan has built themselves up to be a boogeyman. They're not a boogeyman. They just haven't played anybody. I hate to do the, they ain't played no one, Paul, but they ain't played no one. They ain't played no one. And now Maryland has the ball seven minutes left to go in the game in the fourth quarter at home to go 90 yards for a touchdown to beat Michigan. That's pretty cool. So, interesting situation there. Now, let me get back in the comments as well. Oh, okay. So, so, we'll see exactly how this goes. Somebody said, how did State beat Arizona? Um, State beat Arizona. I'll go ahead and put that. How does Jacob Holloway asked, how did State beat Arizona? State beat Arizona 
because Arizona was playing a different quarterback. They found their quarterback after State. Um, Jake Mitchell, well, let's go back up to the top of the, um, the chat. So James Mendoza said, so is it New Year's Six or Orlando so far? That seems to be the consensus. Um, I talked about that early. Mayon Pop says, weird first half. That was an incredibly weird first half. Um, th this was a situation where Georgia was trying to beat Ole Miss twice, period. It's not a transitive thing. Anything's ready. If nothing else, practice for the Egg Bowl is going to be very spirited um, because of that. The game was very similar to the Vandy game last year. A little bit. A little bit. Jake Mitchell says, I'm a homer, Steve, but the first half play calling was really bad. Yes, and it was really vanilla. Okay. Okay, this is my theory, by the way. And my theory. I'm not saying they did this. This is my theory. I don't think Ole Miss prepared for Louisiana Monroe. I think Ole Miss had some basic plays that they were counting on that the offensive line could get through with basic looks, and they weren't doing anything schematically to get ready. As soon as the Georgia game ended, they moved on to Mississippi State. That is my opinion. I guess the you're running inside zone. You're running some very vanilla things, especially um, in the run game, and a lot of times it was run, run, pass. And you were able to schematically get got because, honestly, I don't think you play, paid that much time um, with Louisiana Monroe. And like I said, it was my opinion. I don't know. I wasn't there to see it. But I know that um, Ole Miss had trouble blocking an offensive line or defensive line that nobody has had trouble blocking. So that is my thought. Jake Mitchell says, Wade is such a secret ingredient in office, such an underappreciated weapon. Yeah, very good. The holding calls are out of control. Is that coaching? No, not necessarily. I think it's just the fact that the officials are – the other coach is like, hey, watch this, watch this, watch this, and they bring it in. And after six or seven weeks, everybody is watching that. Let's see, 31-31. Um, Jake Mitchell said, I was just disappointed that Delane kept darting so long. Just don't see a point. Yeah, it was, it was a missed opportunity. The defense played great in the first half. Defense played great in the whole game. Louisiana Monroe had no chance of scoring a touchdown. None. They heaved one up in the end zone on fourth down, but that's really as close as they got. Focus issue and the O-line looked rough. Yeah, that's – Hung Solo asked that question. That 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 is – that is what happened. It was a focus issue. That's all it was. This was a sleepy game. The SEC should use this as a poster child to not have this game played anymore. It should be outlawed. It should absolutely be outlawed. You should not be playing these non-conference games the day before your the week before your rivalry game. You should play nine conference games. If you don't, you're cowards. Everybody wants an easy win. They want to rent a rental win. They want to do all of that stuff so they can go to a bowl game. I don't, I don't care. No, look at the stadium. Look at the atmosphere of that place. Vaught Hemingway Stadium was a fortress this year. It just was. It was a difficult place to play. And do you know why? Because Ole Miss was relevant and they were in every game. This game, nobody showed up. The student section was half empty. Nobody was really there. The atmosphere in the Grove, I was told, is like, nobody's here. It's senior day. These games should not be that. Now, I'm not saying schedule Alabama the week before Mississippi State. But you need to stop doing this. Like Alabama played Chattanooga, and they're playing New Mexico State, Auburn. These cupcake games need to stop. If you need a bye week before your rival, schedule a bye week before your rival. Don't schedule a rental win because nobody is interested in this stuff. This makes it easy for teams to throw arrows at the SEC. It's just, uh. Jake Mitchell says, where's Perkins been? Perkins has been playing. He's just, these are true freshmen. He, his ceiling was what his ceiling was going to be. At a certain point, he has to start learning how to play linebacker. I mean, it's just what it is. Yeah, Hung Solo says they were using the wrong quarterback. They've changed quarterbacks. 
Uh, Maryland just threw an interception, by the way. When Lane was asked about fan support, he said it was really good early in the season. Yeah, it was it was crap today. And it wasn't, that's not the fans' fault. Whenever Lane says that, he's not talking about the fans. He's talking about the athletic department who scheduled this game to begin with. This game had no chance to be a high-level game. No chance to have any sort of atmosphere. And this was senior day. I feel bad for the players, but this, this was an athletic department thing. This this ha- When Lane talks about it being good early in the season, I don't think Lane's talking about the fans. He's talking about whoever made the schedule to begin with, period. Just is what it is. Interesting situation, honestly. Not a lot in this thread. Not a lot in this, I don't know, this live stream. We're going to keep going a little bit. Looks like the chat has dropped down, but change the channel here it looks like um michigan's at a second and nine with five minutes to go in the game and they're on about the 40 something yard line they're almost in field goal range of course a field goal honestly just makes it an eight eight point game so i mean it's an interesting situation um and, and and in maryland but one thing is for sure in this game Oh, Michigan is not, not a top four team. Michigan should fall out of everybody's top four rankings. Everybody. It, they they just don't look good. Um, James Mendota says James Madison is losing. James Madison, they're good, but they're not great. And by the way, you want my take? You want my take? James Madison knew the rule about postseason play before they were good. They accepted the conditions to move up. Now that you're good doesn't mean all of this changes. Okay? It just doesn't. It just doesn't mean that you can all of a sudden change the rules just because you're good. And ESPN trying to pressure the NCAA by putting the Jonas Brothers on there with college game day. It's kind of crap. Kind of crap. The NCAA is a problem. But if you don't like the rule, change the rule. But don't get on to them for enforcing the rule. Honestly, with the NCAA, the big problem that everybody has is they want the NCAA to enforce the rules they have on the books. Steve, you do a great job. This isn't a game that generated a lot of enthusiasm. It's not about you. Heck, I'm about to go deer hunting. Thanks, Jake. Have fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's just all of the momentum in the season just got stunted by them scheduling this football game. It, it, it just is what it is. One of those, one of those situations. Do you have any seniors will be back next? Do you know? Do you have any seniors? Um, some of them are unlikely going to come back. Some are going to go pro. I don't think you can have a situation to where you know what's going to go on um, with 18-year-old college kids. You just kind of don't know that. Bobby Patrick says, looking forward to the Egg Bowl. If we can't get up for state, I don't think anybody needs to worry about that game and getting up for that. I don't think anybody needs to play the transitive property of what we saw in the first half for the Egg Bowl. I, I just genuinely don't think you need to do any of that. Some people are. Some people, I guarantee you, um, in the comments, it's going to pop up. It's like, well, if we play like that, we're not beating Mississippi State. Well, yeah, uh, duh. But they're not going to play like that. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't. This Michigan punter just – my goodness, just did a great punt. Absolutely downed him at the one-yard line. Does anyone like the NCAA? No, but you know what? That's their job. It's their job to catch errors and be the bad guy. It's whenever they decide they want to be good guys and activists and start playing favorites that people actually have a real legitimate problem with the NCAA. 
the SEC mentioned that the receiving core has another year of eligibility. Any thoughts? Um, yes, I think that um, Jordan Watkins will likely come back. I'm not, like I said, I don't know anything, but I'm, I'm assuming that Jordan Watkins will come back. We don't know about Dayton Wade, and Trey Harris is probably gone. Trey Harris is a he's another AJ Brown to where he's going to get drafted in the second round and be a dominant player in the league. We need to keep our foot on um, keep our foot on state Thursday night. Yes, absolutely. Need to absolutely keep your foot on Mississippi State Thursday night. It the, I did a video. It's time to bury them. It is time to bury Mississippi State. It is time to do to Mississippi State what Alabama has done to Auburn, what Georgia has done to Georgia Tech, what Virginia Tech has done to Virginia. What Tennessee has done to Vanderbilt, it is time to do that in the Egg Bowl. For years, years, Ole Miss has used that game as a benchmark in their season because they weren't beating LSU. They weren't winning that game. Now they get the upper hand on that game, and the Mississippi State game needs to be a win. It's unexcusable for anything but a win in this game. Ole Miss is going to come in as probably a 13-point favorite, something like that. Somewhere in that ballpark, I'm going to see if there's a lineup right now. I mean, we're, we're relaxed. Um, But <clears throat> this is a game that Ole Miss absolutely needs to put their foot on the throat. They need to not take it off. And if they can, they need to run it up. Honestly. Line is not out on FanDuel as we speak right now. But I'm expecting somewhere between 13 and 15 um, in the line. Roy Labello, avoid the rush. Hate state early? Yes, absolutely. I hope Bentley comes back. That bat field with the addition of Riscano will be amazing. Yes, you are absolutely correct there. Are we not looking at Joe Corey? I, I do not know what that means. Sorry. Um, Harris is gone. Yeah, and, and honestly, Harris should be. Um, do not kick a dog, please. Um, we're better than that. Please do not kick a dog. Um, how many unsportsmanlike conduct penalties do you think it, this egg bowl will get? None. I imagine Ole Miss will go in there and workmanlike take care of business. The animosity in this game is between fan members and fans. State's going to be a position to where if everything goes well, um, you might see them, I don't want to say give, give up, but you know how it is. Um, so we'll see exactly what happens as well there. We need to bring back the bad blood out of the Egg Bowl. I think the fans, the fans need to do it. I mean, take that. This is the ultimate revenge for what they did. For Steve Robertson writing the book and what they did, whenever we pronounced the mayor of Starkville, oh my goodness, they just gave Michigan a ball game. They just gave Michigan a ball game. Oh my good! That is the worst call I have ever seen. There's a receiver five yards away. It was a little bit short, but there's a receiver five yards away from where the hit pass hit the ground. They called intentional grounding in the end zone. In the end zone. Gave Michigan two points and the ball in a game that Michigan was going to lose. This was the Big Ten ensuring that the game against Ohio State gets ratings. Oh my gosh, they know Michigan's frauds. They know Michigan's frauds. Oh, my goodness. That is the worst penalty I've ever seen. People complain all the time about penalties going against Ole Miss. That is the worst penalty I've ever seen. To do that to Maryland whenever they're 95 yards away from scoring the go-ahead touchdown. Oh, that is – that is – oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I, we need to find out if Connor Stallions has infiltrated these referee units as well. Oh my goodness. This is this is terrible. This is terrible. 
five yards, he missed the receiver short by. They called intentional grounding on the quarterback. Receiver was there. It was just an underthrown pass. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. I know we're um, freaking out about the Ole Miss game right now. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 he just threw it off his back foot. There's a receiver over there five yards away. Oh, oh my goodness. They they just gifted Michigan a game. Literally watch that happen. Whenever Michigan thinks that everybody's against them, they just get gifted a football game. It's terrible. Terrible. I have no dog in this fight. None. None. That is the most blatant thing I've ever seen. When fishy stuff is happening all around that conference, fishy stuff just pops up. And I'm not even going to say, Michigan still has to, I mean, Maryland still has to drive the ball 95 yards against that defense. Not oh, I, I I hate it for the kids. I hate it for the kids. Oh man, Hunk Solo says you are are you sure they don't have SEC refs calling the Michigan game? Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I, I'm just on something right now. I'm just kind of there. I can't believe a conference would do what they just did. And like I said, it wasn't even a situation to where Maryland was guaranteed to win the game. Of course, that's how – that whenever you're, I guess, point shaving or anything like that, I mean, that's I guess that's when you do it. My God. Goodness, James Mendoza says Louisville's about to win. Um, and Bobby Patrick says cheaters are going to cheat. This is a mess. We don't have a whole lot to talk about right now. I'm just kind of watching the end of this Michigan game. It's third and two. And it feels like Maryland has to get a stop here or Michigan's going to win. Um, I mean, it, it's it's... I, I cannot believe they did they did that. And Maryland got to stop. And Michigan might go for it. Maryland's not calling a timeout though. That's weird. Yeah, it, it was just one of those things. They just took the moment. Maryland called a timeout. It's fourth down. I have to imagine that Maryland's going to punt this ball because, I mean, going for it right here and not getting it is just basically giving Maryland the ball at midfield. So I imagine they're going to punt the ball. By the way, I'm telling you, Michigan's not good. They're not good. Ole Miss not bearing state has more heart for the egg. Okay, that you can't judge that, Glenn. I'm sorry. Just agree to disagree. Dart said in post game he hadn't decided if he's coming back next year per the Rebel Walk. Um, he's coming back next year. He's coming back next year. Um, he what he's going to do in the off season is um put in his draft grade, and his draft grade comes back first back first or second round, which it's not going to do. He, he'll leave. I think I think Michigan missed it. And, um, this is where um, Michigan gets a favorable spot. They went for it on fourth down. And they're going to have to measure it. Uh, 
Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Georgia, I think they, they said had given up um, – Um, a touchdown on the first drive in like six straight games. And by the way, Glenn, I'm going to bring this up again. Mississippi State's not good. They're period. They're not good. The Egg Bowl doesn't, is going to lose relevance to Ole Miss um, a little bit. So I like your real reaction to games. You should do this more often. Well, you know, since nobody is going to want to talk about that ULM game, I, I needed to do something. So, I mean, what I was thinking about doing, honestly, for this game is to have like the double box, the multicast of both games and just having that on during the game. Um, but I didn't know how that would go. Um, so let's see if he actually got it. I don't know if he got it. There's not, they're not going to be able to overturn it, but I don't know if he, I think he got a favorable spot. If the ball's in his left hand. Yeah. So we'll see exactly how that goes. I hope everybody has a good Saturday. Enjoy the football games um, today. Here's the games to watch for Ole Miss fans, by the way. This is what you need to look at. Watch the Kansas State and Kansas game. Watch the Georgia and Tennessee game. And th those are the two games that you need to watch. Um, Tennessee's a difficult place to play at home. So we'll see what happens. Anyway. Oh. Weird day. Weird day. I hope everybody has a good day and enjoys what's going on as well. So anyway, let me go ahead and get out of here and get off the line and we will start. Oh, this will be the normal Monday show. So on Sunday, like always, we will put this show up there. Um, on Monday, we'll do our keys to victory Tuesday on um, what to watch for Wednesday. Know your enemy Thursday. Why Ole Miss wins. And um, we'll leave the post game show up for the Egg Bowl on Fur Friday show as well. We'll probably actually do that like a regular show. So we'll see exactly how that goes. I hope everybody has a good time. Look forward to talking to you next week. We'll talk to you later. This has been the Locked On Omas podcast. Take care.